Welcome or welcome back Star Wars enthusiasts to the channel where we dive deep into just about everything Star Wars. The lore, the characters, the settings, the lighting, the music, yada yada yada, all that stuff. Today we'll be diving into the haunting aesthetic of the Ahsoka series. From its dark dreary tone to its muted color palette, this show has set itself apart as one of the most visually distinct entries in Star Wars. But the visual design isn't just for style, it tells a deeper story, setting the stage for a twisted narrative of failure, danger, and mystery. We will be covering how the Great Mother's magics raise stormtroopers from the dead, what this means compared to the Legends novel Death Troopers, and how the show's lighting and music foreshadowed Ahsoka's defeat at the hands of Grand Admiral Thrawn. But we'll also be exploring how Anakin Skywalker's ghost and a final moment of brilliance brings light back to the end of this dark journey. But before I go on, here's a quick word from our tiny voice sponsor. Okay, it's just me with some speed change and pitch adjustments, but it's fun, so listen. This Star Wars channel is fun. More fun than listening to K-pop for a week straight. Yes, it's even more fun than slapping yourself in the face with a tennis racket. And it's even more fun than stepping in poop barefooted. Human poop. Stepping on Legos? Not even close. By subscribing, you're telling me that you love Star Wars and hate having your hair cut by a podiatrist. Don't be afraid. Subscribe now and have all your Star Wars needs met in one convenient place. Good job. Now go forth and bask in euphoria. And as a side note, I have exciting news that I will be revealing at the end of this video. So, stick around for it. You won't want to miss it. Let's get into Ahsoka. Wait, that sounded bad. Hmm, y'all perverts. Let's get into the Ahsoka series. From the outset, Ahsoka embraces a visual and tonal darkness that immediately feels different from other Star Wars projects. The very first scenes show us that we are stepping into a different kind of Star Wars story, one where the sense of optimism is drained from the frame, leaving behind the cold remnants of war. The muted colors of the series play a huge role in this atmosphere. The show predominantly uses washed out blues, grays, and greens, which gives everything a slightly desaturated, lifeless feel. These tones extend beyond the environment to the characters themselves. Even Ahsoka, who we last saw in Star Wars Rebels wearing white, seems to fade into these environments, reflecting the inner turmoil she's experiencing. The muted palette isn't just a design choice for visual effect, it's a representation of the emotional weight that hangs over Ahsoka Tano and the galaxy at large. This is a world in precarious state, teetering between the remnants of the Galactic Empire's shadow and the uncertainty of a new future. The galaxy feels tired, worn down by years of conflict. Ahsoka herself reflects this weariness. She is not the same bright-eyed Padawan from the Clone Wars. She is a battle-hardened warrior, scarred by her experiences with the Jedi and what happened with Anakin Skywalker. The color choices bring this emotional depth to the forefront, showing a character who, much like the galaxy, feels stuck in a state of uncertainty and loss. The environments further emphasize this tone, whether it's the bleakness of Peridia, the cold metallic interiors of starships, or the abandoned wastelands where much of the action unfolds. Each setting feels as though it's been drained of life. These locations are steeped in history, but it's all history long forgotten by the rest of the galaxy, left behind in the search for progress. These places serve as metaphors for Ahsoka's own journey. She's a character existing on the fringes of the galaxy, much like the places she visits. Still, important, but not overlooked. One of the standout techniques used throughout the series is the dominance of shadow and the strategic use of light, or rather, the absence of it. Much of Ahsoka is shot in low-light settings, whether its dimly lit starship interiors or outdoor sequences at dusk. These low-key lighting setups are more than just a stylistic choice. They actively reinforce the feeling that danger is always lurking just out of sight. The darkness isn't just atmospheric, it's symbolic. It represents the looming threat of Grand Admiral Thrawn's return and the resurgence of evil forces in the galaxy. In fact, one could argue that the lighting throughout the series foreshadows the fact that Thrawn was always going to get away. 
The shadows dominate the screen, while the light never quite breaks through it. It's as if the show is telling us from the beginning that the fight is futile, that Ahsoka and her team are constantly battling against forces that are beyond their control. The series wants us to feel the weight of the inevitability, and the lighting is a crucial component in delivering that message. Even in scenes where Ahsoka is on the move or strategizing, the lighting emphasizes isolation. Take the moments she's inside the Pergil being transported to the new galaxy where Peridia is. There's a coldness to the light, a stark contrast to the warmer, brighter environments we've seen in other Star Wars stories. This cold lighting isolates her from her surroundings, reinforcing the notion that this is a lone warrior fighting a battle on her own terms, even when she has allies. The light never feels warm, comforting, or hopeful. It's a visual cue that the show is heading toward a conclusion that won't be triumphant in the traditional sense. Now let's talk about one of the most striking visual moments of the series the great mothers raising the dead stormtroopers. The scene is both chilling and awe-inspiring. The magics used by the great mothers are rooted in ancient Nysister lore, but the execution in Ahsoka makes it feel even more twisted and unnatural. These stormtroopers aren't simply being resurrected, they're animated in a way that feels wrong, as if the very essence of the force is being manipulated against its natural order. The undead stormtroopers immediately call to mind the Death Troopers novel in Legends, where stormtroopers are turned into zombies by a viral outbreak, but the difference here is significant. In Death Troopers, the horror comes from science gone wrong, a biological terror that infects and reanimates corpses. In Ahsoka, the horror is mystical and ancient. The Great Mothers are using a form of necromancy, but it's tied to their command over the dark side of the Force and their magic. It's not a viral contagion that raises these stormtroopers, it's a direct violation of the natural balance of the Force. This distinction makes the undead stormtroopers in Ahsoka feel even more menacing. They aren't mindless zombies, they're soldiers being controlled by the Night Sisters' will, their very souls ensnared by the Great Mother's magics. The aesthetic of these soldiers is also worth noting. Their armor is cracked and decayed, reflecting not only their undead state, but also the remnants of the Empire's fall. They're relics of a bygone era, brought back to serve a new, more terrifying master. Another aspect to consider is when we see parts of these stormtroopers' faces under the masks. They're already decaying hinting that these stormtroopers may not have been resurrected in this moment for the very first time, that maybe this has been going on for years. Musically, these scenes are some of the most unsettling in the series. Composer Jeff Kleiner does an incredible job of layering in eerie, haunting chants that accompany the Night Sisters' magics. These aren't traditional Star Wars battle themes. There's no heroic swell of orchestration. Instead, the music is deliberately minimalist, focusing on droning sounds and whispers that feel otherworldly. This choice of score reflects the ancient mystical powers at play. It's a soundscape that doesn't just underscore the action, it heightens the sense of dread, making the resurrection of the stormtroopers feel even more unnatural and foreboding. This is also where Ahsoka borrows from Death Troopers. The novel leaned heavily into horror, using silence, grotesque imagery, and sudden shifts in tone to unsubtle readers. In Ahsoka, the music similarly keeps the viewer on edge. There's no relief, there's no comforting melody to anchor us, just the Great Mother's powers. The music feels unpredictable and dangerous, also threatening to tip into the chaos. Grand Admiral Thrawn's presence looms large over this series, and much like his character, the aesthetic surrounding him is one of calculated coldness. Thrawn's starship, often framed against the backdrop of thick atmosphere or dimly lit interiors, reflects his methodical nature. The lighting around Thrawn always suggests control. Even in the darker moments, he is illuminated just enough to show that he's always a step ahead of his backgrounds. While the galaxy around him teeters on chaos, 
Thrawn remains a calm figure in the shadows, playing a long game that no one else seems to fully grasp. The visual control is paired with a musical theme that echoes Thrawn's calculated nature. His score is composed of slow, deliberate notes that build tension but never release it. The music surrounding Thrawn doesn't crescendo into action. It lingers, suggesting that the true threat is still on the horizon. It's a brilliant choice that reinforces Thrawn's strategic mind. Just as his plans unfold over time, so too does his music. It's always simmering beneath the surface, giving us a sense that we're only seeing a fraction of what's to come. Thrawn's escape is telegraphed from the start, not just in the narrative, but in the visual and auditory cues. The darkness that surrounds him, both literally and figuratively, is a visual indicator that he is in control. The lighting in his scenes is never harsh or erratic. It's steady, just like his character. We, as the audience, are conditioned to expect this eventual victory, even if we hope for a different outcome. And yet, amidst all this darkness, we're given a final moment of light. Anakin Skywalker's Ghost Anakin's appearance at the end of the series is a stark visual and tonal contrast to everything that came before it. For the first time, we see a warm, golden light filling the screen, illuminating Ahsoka and her surroundings. It's a symbolic moment that reminds us of hope. And that's what Star Wars is built off of. And rebellions. Anakin Skywalker's ghost at the end of Ahsoka is a masterful turning point in both the narrative and the show's aesthetic. After episodes dominated by dark, muted tones, harsh lighting, and an oppressive atmosphere, the sudden appearance of warm, golden light stands in stark contrast. Anakin's ghost bathed in this light serves as a symbol of hope, redemption, and the potential for healing, both for Ahsoka and for the galaxy. This visual shift isn't just a representation of Anakin's redemption arc. It's also a reflection of Ahsoka Tano's internal journey. Throughout the series, Ahsoka has been grappling with her past, particularly her connection to Anakin Skywalker, her former master who became Darth Vader. The darkness that has surrounded her, both literally and metaphorically, represents her struggle with the legacy of the Jedi, the trauma of the Clone Wars, and the burden of her own choices. Anakin's ghost appeared in the light, signifying her acceptance of these struggles. It is as if, for the first time, Ahsoka Tano can finally let go of the weight of her past and embrace the possibility of a future where she isn't haunted by the mistakes of others. The use of the light in this scene is significant not only in the contrast to the rest of the series, but also in what it foreshadows for Ahsoka Tano's journey. In a show dominated by shadows and darkness, the emergence of light signals a shift in tone, perhaps hinting that Ahsoka is now ready to take on a more active role in shaping the galaxy's future, rather than just reacting to the threats around her or staying hidden. Anakin's ghost also carries a deep spiritual significance within the Star Wars universe. As a forced ghost, Anakin represents the eternal connection between life, death, and the Force. His presence at the end of Ahsoka not only serves as a reminder of his own redemption, but also emphasizes the cyclical nature of the Force. Anakin's journey from Jedi Knight to Sith Lord and finally to a redeemed Force ghost mirrors Ahsoka's own path of wandering through the galaxy in search of purpose and balance. The light that surrounds Anakin in his ghostly form is a visual representation of the balance that Ahsoka seeks. His ghost appears in a moment of peace, without the turmoil or conflict that has defined much of the series. This moment of the serenity highlights that the Force itself at its core is about balance and unity, despite the dark forces at play throughout the galaxy. In a broader sense, Anakin's ghost appearing to Ahsoka serves as a reminder of the enduring hope in the Star Wars universe. Even in its darkest moments where all seems lost, there is always a glimmer of light. This hope is intrinsic to the Star Wars saga. No matter how far characters fall, no matter how deep into the darkness the galaxy sinks, there's always the potential for redemption and a return to the light. 
Anakin Skywalker, who once was the embodiment of evil as Darth Vader, now stands as a beacon of hope for Ahsoka and the next generation. This theme of balancing light and dark is central to the visual design of the Ahsoka series. While the majority of the series is dominated by darker tones and lighting, Anakin's final appearance reminds us that darkness and light exist in tandem. This visual aesthetic reflects the broader Star Wars philosophy of balance within the Force. There is no true victory for the light without acknowledging the darkness, and vice versa. Though, throughout the series, we see this balance play out visually in the contrast between characters like Ahsoka Tano and Balin Skull. Balin is a dark force user with ambiguous motivations often, often exists in shadow, both literally and figuratively. His scenes are bathed in cold, muted light, emphasizing his detached and calculating nature. Ahsoka Tano, on the other hand, while often surrounded by darkness, is still framed as a character striving for light, even if she hasn't fully embraced it yet. This visual interplay between light and dark reflects the ongoing struggle within the characters themselves, especially Ahsoka, who has to reconcile her Jedi past with her uncertain future. Balin's scenes in particular stand out for their stark use of shadow and light. As a character who doesn't align with Sith or Jedi, his presence in the series feels like a wild card, further disrupting the traditional notions of light and dark. His scenes are often set against desolate backdrops, emphasizing his isolation from both sides of the Force. Yet, his interactions with Shin Hati suggest that there's still something unresolved within him. Perhaps a desire for balance that he, too, is seeking in a galaxy that is anything but stable. Finally, we return to one of the most visually distinct elements of the Ahsoka series, the Great Mothers and their command of Night Sister magics. The aesthetic of the Night Sisters in Ahsoka is one that draws heavily on ancient mystical visuals. The Great Mothers themselves are adorned in dark, flowing robes, their faces muted. They operate in dimly lit, almost cave-like settings surrounded by eerie green light wherever they perform their dark rituals. This aesthetic choice highlights the unnaturalness of their powers, reinforcing the idea that they are manipulating forces that go beyond the natural order of the Star Wars galaxy. The use of color here is particularly striking. While much of the series is dominated by mute cold tones, the Night Sister's magic introduced bursts of green, an unnatural, sickly hue that feels completely at odds with the rest of the show's color palette. The visual dissonance makes the Night Sister's powers feel all the more alien and threatening. The green glow of their magics casts long, unsetting shadows emphasizing the ancient, malevolent nature of their control over the dead. It's a visual reminder that these aren't just ordinary dark side users. There is something older, something more primal, outside of the Force. The resurrection of the stormtroopers under the green glow of Night Sister Magics is one of the most haunting sequences in the series. It feels like a visual throwback to some Star Wars darker themes particularly those found in the Legends novels like Death Troopers. Yet the aesthetic of the undead stormtroopers is unique in its own right, drawing more from the mystical horror of the Night Sisters than the biological terror of Death Troopers. The cracked and decaying armor of the stormtroopers, their decaying faces, visually mirrors the decay of the Empire itself, now being used as a tool for a new dark force in the galaxy. In the end, Ahsoka delivers aesthetic that is both haunting and beautiful, one that fully embraces the dark side of the Star Wars universe. From the muted color palette to the strategic use of shadows and eerie lighting, the series crafts a world where danger is always lurking in the corners, where hope feels fragile, and where the past weighs heavily on the future. And yet, even in this darkness, there are moments of light, Anakin Skywalker's ghost, Ahsoka's quiet resilience, and the final shot of golden light as the series closes. These moments remind us that in true Star Wars fashion, there is always hope, even in the darkest of times. As we look toward future episodes in the next season, 
We can only imagine how this balance of light and dark will continue to play out or shift and what new visual and thematic surprises wait us all. Now, that's all I have to say about the Ahsoka series for right now. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear more. And now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the news I told you about in the beginning of this video. And that is that my channel name will be changing. I've announced this a couple times. It won't be changing overnight. I'll do it slowly and gradually over the next few weeks. I am working on some new logo ideas, and I will put those up in the community as a poll for you guys to vote on, just as I did for the channel name. And you can pick which logo you like, and I will stick with that one. So, it's all on you. This is as much your channel as it is mine, and I appreciate you all. But before I go, here is another quick word from our tiny sponsor. Subscribe now and know that I will do everything I can to help you get through the trauma of stepping your barefoot in human poop. I can't guarantee that I can stop it from happening, but know that I am here for you if you do. I also talk about Star Wars constantly. Subscribe and like, and let's get this channel over 50,000 subscribers to show the haters they are alone. Until the next time, this is Gerald, a Star Wars fanatic, signing off, wishing you all great health, happiness, and peace. Thank you all for watching, and remember, may the Force be with you, always.